Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dan at Launch Academy, here to bring you another episode of the HTML show. Um, today we're gonna continue our exploration of the creation of our online resume. We've got a wonderful template, we've got a wonderful uh, example resume to spin off of. And today we're gonna look at some of the graphical elements of the theme that we have working today. And uh, we're gonna work through this and continue to work through uh, probably for the next two or three episodes or so. So I hope you'll join me. Uh, but before we dive in, I'd really love for you to send me a screenshot of the work that you're doing so far. So if you picked a color palette, if you picked another theme or whatever it might be, send me a screenshot. If you're just joining us in the Facebook comments, um, go ahead and share a screenshot there of the thing that you're working on from an HTML perspective. If you're watching along on our YouTube channel, I hope that you'll uh, share some code and some screenshots there. But the best place, the best place to interact with us is on our Slack channel. So I hope you're uh, engaging us in that conversation on the Slack chat. Uh, even if you're watching this on YouTube, it's never too late to go join us in that discussion uh, and get some perspective on the code that you're writing. All right, so let's dive into today's material. So uh, in, in the previous episodes, you notice that we were working through the profile section of our uh, online resume. And what we wanna do here is we wanna focus more on these programming skills and the things that are kind of more graphical in nature. But what's neat is now that we are kind of duplicating another section of the web page, we actually want to bear in mind and think about how our CSS is going to scale and adapt to the two different sections here. So we're going to do quite a bit of refactoring of our existing CSS while we add some new aesthetic features to the web page. So let's dive in. The first thing that we want to do is we want to tackle this uh, green resume uh, section. and. As I'm going through uh, and kind of chunking and decomposing these problems, I want to just kind of check back with some of the work that I've already done in the context of my web page. So I can see the commonalities between the resume header and the profile header. So I definitely want to share some of the CSS properties amongst those two different sections. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to start to generalize some of the behaviors that we're seeing uh, in both sections. So I'm going to open up our index, and if you remember, the way we structured this is we have a section with class resume component, and then we had an H3. So we're going to continue that paradigm, and in fact, we're going to uh, copy over the resume detail section as well, just to create some consistency in the markup as we move from section to section. And as you're sort of decomposing the problem and working through the markup that you're creating here, you want to think about how you can not reinvent the wheel. So as developers, as uh, uh, hard coders who, write to, who, who like to write hand-coded, uh, crafty uh, HTML, we're always thinking about how we can do the simplest thing that works. And oftentimes, the simplest thing that works is to uh, duplicate those paradigms that we've created in previous sections of the web page. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to close all my tags. And one thing that I'm going to do as well is just check in on my W3C standards validation as well. So we'll see uh, that our new section uh, is created here. And I'm just going to move this to a responsive mode here and change our width to a 320px window and zoom in a little bit. And now you'll see that we've got another profile section here, which is OK. Decent, OK. So uh, what we want to do is we want to rename this to actually say resume, right, if we're being consistent with the theme. And we're just going to refresh this page and run it through the validator to make sure that we're dealing with valid markup. And consider using the H1 element as a top level heading only. That's OK. We're intentionally using that H1 the way that we think we should. And we're going to add a heading for the resume detail section that we have. So these are just warnings. 
and you can tell warnings uh, basically by the text, but also the fact that they're yellow. If there are any things that said error uh, and were red, we'd want to address those. But we're in the process of organizing this section, so uh, this warning is really irrelevant, and we're appropriately setting the H1 because we only have it uh, appear once on the web page. So we're going to continue to ignore this first warning, and we're going to address this second warning as we work through the rest of the markup here. Okay, so we've added the resume. We've got that resume component in place. And we may decide to make this programming skills section an H3 tag or an H4 tag, depending on. So we've got an H3 here because we've already designated an H2 for my title and an H1 for our, uh, our name here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go down the outline and I'm gonna define this as an H4 and say programming skills. Just gonna kinda see how that renders. And notice that we've got a little bit of a rendering issue here in our width. So we're gonna have to address that. But the header itself actually looks pretty good for programming skills. So let's go ahead and just check that out. We've got to uh, make it uppercase, uh, but we'll address that in just a sec. For now, let's focus on these headers that are not appropriately setting their width. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our CSS, and we're going to look at our resume component H3. I think it's just an H3 selector. Scrolling. Here it is, resume component H3. And notice that we're setting our width based on percentage in our padding on a pixel basis, which is great. But because we're dealing with a limited width here, we probably want to set a min width. So we've set our uh, width percentage to 25%, but what we need to do is we need to accommodate small widths. So I'm going to actually set our min width to say uh, 150 PX. See if that makes things a little nicer. It certainly does. Uh, I think that's probably a little much. So we'll bring that down to say 125 PX or we should probably use even numbers. So we just use 100 PX. So setting that min width uh, helped us to get a more uh, consistent experience on the mobile view here. So watch what happens if I comment out that min width. See, our uh, header here is taking up 25% of the available horizontal real estate, but it doesn't show up in that nice centered capacity because uh, we've got our box sizing set to border box. So we're seeing this kind of misalignment of the button. So what we need to do is we need to set a min width that accommodates smaller widths and we get a much better presentation here. So we've addressed that and you know if we have a longer uh, 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 in characters uh, headline for each of these resume sections, we may have to adjust that min width again but for now, it's working well for us. So we're going to continue down the line. So onto this programming skills headline. Well, if we want to be consistent with the, uh, the, uh, the approach here that's used in this theme, we want to make sure that we have uppercase uh, lettering here. So we're going to set some styling on our H4 tag. And we're going to say text transform uppercase. So that will bring that up to date. And we could decide to change the color and things like that, but I think it's actually looking pretty good. So I'm going to I'm going to stick with uh, the aesthetic that we have right now. And what I wanted to spend the meat of our time together uh, on today is this bar chart. So let's imagine that you were building your website and hopefully you're building along with me. 
and you want to depict that you're you're developing uh, skills in both HTML and CSS and maybe Ruby or maybe JavaScript so uh, we're gonna have four bars as part of our programming skills repertoire here and I'm gonna show you how to provide sort of a a CSS based progress indicator here that's gonna look really nice and clean alongside uh, and in the spirit of what we have depicted here all right so uh, and we're gonna do so in a way that is more semantic than what the actual creator of this theme has done. So you notice here, uh, if we view the source and we inspect these elements, uh, the developer of this section actually opted to do a, a side and then have divs with spans inside of it. And because we're depicting a list of programming skills here, I actually believe that this should be an unordered list. And if I were prioritizing what skills I thought were most important, I might in fact semantically represent this as an ordered list. But because I'm kind of ambivalent about the skill sets that I have and I just want to give an accurate depiction of my feeling of le level of expertise in these programming skills, I'm going to uh, just make these as an ordered, unordered list. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to automatically define because this is pretty unique, I'm actually going to make this an ID to start. We're only gonna have one of these bar charts on the page, so it makes sense for us to only do uh, an ID here as opposed to a class. If we were going to do another sort of skill set listing with a percentage of proficiency, I may consider using that as uh, a class, but because we only have one on this example resume, we're gonna use an ID instead. All right, so we're going to say uh, programming skills. And I'm going to list out to start all of my programming skills. So uh, I'm going to pretend that I'm an aspiring programmer and I'm just learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Ruby. And if you've been enjoying the course uh, and you want to learn a little bit more about both front end and back end programming, I hope that you'll check us out at launchacademy.com. Hopefully you've been enjoying these very hands-on workshops uh, and these deep dives into HTML. Well, that's the very same experience that you get with Launch Academy on campus and Launch Academy online. So if you're becoming more and more serious about changing your career and becoming a software engineer, I hope you'll check out Launch Academy and I hope you'll ask me any questions that you have in the Slack chat uh, about the program and about everything that we do for our students. I'd love to have you in one of our courses. Uh, definitely give me a shout and let me know what you're thinking. Awesome. All right, so back to the code. So if we go ahead and refresh our page, right now we've got a very plain Jane unordered list. And what I want to do is I want to reflect these uh, progress bars as divs. So I'm just going to make the markup. And let's say I'm at 50% uh, proficiency. And I'm kind of just mocking up the, uh, the markup that I want so that I can use CSS accordingly to get the aesthetic that I'm looking for. So I'm going to say here, uh, we're going to actually put that, I believe that's how it's structured. Oh, no, actually, so we want to actually have that be this way. So, and by the looks of things, we actually want that to be on its own line. So, arguably, we could make these H5s, or uh, F, uh, fifth level header tags, but it doesn't really encapsulate the holistic outline of the document. So I'm gonna opt out of using uh, uh, header tags here, and I'm just gonna use a standard P tag. So I'm just wireframing, essentially mocking up the markup that I want to see inside that list so that we can stylize it accordingly. 
So we've got the programming skills, we've got the name of the skill, the percentage of proficiency that we think uh, we want to use, and this div is going to serve as the background for the progress indicator. All right, so we've got sort of a wireframed and mocked up sense of HTML here. And notice that the aesthetic as it is right now is, is not very pretty, right? So we've got some work to do. So the first thing that we want to do is get rid of the uh, bullets here and also make sure that we're being mindful of the white space uh, that we've created, right? So we've got to adjust the margin of our unordered list so that it lines up with our programming skills section. And uh, we also want to start to think about how we're going to shape up these progress bars. Okay, so first things first, let's focus on the unordered list. And what we're going to do is isolate it using it an ID based selector. Remember that ID based selectors are the most efficient way to identify a single element on my web page. And I'm going to say list style none, and that will get rid of the bullets. But now I also have to override the default margin or padding that the user agent style sheet is sending here. So we're looking for either margin, and that's what it looks like here. Looks like the user agent style sheet is setting a margin. So what we want to do is we just want to set the margin to zero. We have the white space appropriately set thanks to the resume detail section that we did in a previous episode. So everything should line up nicely. Make sure I saved my document here. Uh, perhaps I have to set this on the UL itself. I'm trying to get this uh, list to line up with my programming skills. All right. And that's not working, so we're going to inspect the element. Oh, I believe I must have had a syntax error or something. Hang on. What's going on here? All right, so we've got episode 15. I'm working on the right directory here. So why is my style not being applied? Interesting. See how my margin is not being applied? That's interesting and different. Um, trying to understand why that margin is not being applied. It could be that because the user agent is using a vendor specific selector that this is being interpreted as unimportant, which is unusual. So I'm going to, just for debugging purposes, set this to important and see if we get the result that we want. We don't. Interesting. So I'm going to inspect this element and see the margin is still being applied. You can see that by the yellow box. So we want to essentially uh, disable that and actually it may be padding and not margin that we're seeing and that looks to be the case. So I thought I was isolating a margin rule and overriding a margin rule but it's actually a padding rule that I need to override. So we don't need the important keyword. We want to use that sparingly as it is and we're gonna set padding to zero. And there we go, we get the result that we want. Awesome, okay. That's a lot better. <laughs> All right, awesome. So uh, we wanna treat this skill listing with a different sort of gray, and uh, we also wanna make it bold. So we're gonna do that by isolating, again, using an ID-based selector first, and then isolating that paragraph tag because this paragraph tag is special in the context of our programming skills section or unordered list. And we're gonna make the font weight bold and we make 
the color a darker gray, maybe like a, uh, let's see how that looks. No, that's too like the background color that we have going. So we'll want to get darker, maybe 333. That's not really discernible from the top. So maybe we'll do, yeah, that's not bad. We can roll with that. Okay. So now we've got a little something special as it pertains to our div in our span. If you remember, a div is a block level element and a span is an inline level element. And I need to kind of change the behavior of both of these using positioning so that I can essentially overlay the percentage on top of the background that's supposed to represent 100% proficiency. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stylize the bar and get this, the bar working the way that we want. And then we're gonna get uh, the percentage proficiency to overlay on top of that. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is generalize the class here. And we'll call it a uh, programming skill. And we're gonna use that to draw our uh, background. So we wanna make sure that it spans 100% of the available width. And we're gonna set a background color to that, that light gray. And there we go. So uh, we've, we see a little bit of uh, forward momentum here. But notice how the gray bar uh, bleeds essentially off the page. That's not ideal. And in fact, as we expand, it's gonna, it's gonna continue to do that. So, so that's not ideal, we don't wanna do that. Um, change this back to 320, back to a zoom of 150. So we need some white space on the right here as well. So we're going to set that on our resume detail section. See how we set the margin left here? Well, that was great for the, sort of lining up our content on the left-hand side, but we also want to mirror that as, as web developers, as web designers, and really doing anything from a user interface perspective, we often crave symmetry. So I'm going to change that margin left rule to also encapsulate right as well. So this zero will set the top and bottom margin, and this uh, 0.75 REM will set the left and right margin for us. So we should get a more symmetrical view. Uh, that's looking a lot better. Okay, awesome. And notice though that, uh, yeah, that's fine for now. So see how we've got a symmetrical amount of white space on the left and right of our programming skills. We may wanna increase our white space uh, over time, but I actually think that this is pretty decent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with this. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to put that 50% span at a width of 50% and give it a different background color. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna say span And believe it or not, what we're going to do is we're going to use an inline style. Shocking, I know, right? This is something that we learned in previous episodes that this is not necessarily something that we want to do, right? So, why are we setting it this way? Well, because we want this width to reflect uh, our unique skill level. So this number is always going to have to correlate with what we put inside the span. So rather than set, uh, creating different classes in our style sheet every single time, it just makes sense to have that in line and uh, very pleasing to the developer's eye that this number is always going to match this number. Just a, a, a boundary condition 
for using an inline style in this case. Okay, so what we do need to do is we need to actually set our span to behave like a block. So uh, that's the first thing that we're going to do. So we're gonna set our skill level. And one thing to think about as you're working through your CSS is you want to uh, kind of contextualize and organize your CSS rules in a way where uh, you're kind of dealing with related sections. So I'm being careful as I revise and mod modify my CSS to always kind of keep uh, related rules together. So these rules all together kind of attach and, and apply to our programming skills unordered list. Okay. So I can do here, I can say that I want the display to be block. And in this case, I might set a color to the light blue. So let's see what happens. Oh, I need to set the background color. And I'm gonna make the color of the text white, and I'm gonna set the text alignment to the right to achieve this aesthetic. And then we're also gonna wanna set the font weight to bold. All right, so you can see here how uh, this block has been modified to essentially account for the percentage indicator. So I set the background color uh, in the block behavior uh, and the font weight in the CSS, but I actually set the width via an inline style. And that's desirable. Notice that this is a little hard to read, so that light blue might not be a, a good selection for this uh, implementation. Let's try the gold and see how that looks. That looks a lot better. Awesome. Okay. Uh, now notice uh, the white space that we're seeing between the HTML and the actual bar. We probably want to modify that a bit. Uh, and uh, I think as well, we may want to add just a little bit of white space. See how the 50% is like bleeding right on the edge of the progress bar? So we're just going to set uh, the padding right and give it just two pixels of padding. See how that moved the 50% uh, slightly over to the left so that percentage isn't bleeding all the way into the gray? That's a good sign. All right, so let's inspect this. And if you notice, the P tag is kind of the offending tag that's introducing all kinds of white space between the HTML title and the progress bar itself. So we're going to chill out that margin a little bit. in our programming skill p tag here. So we'll set this to maybe 0 0.5 REMs, and we don't want any left or right. So let's see what we get. That's a little better. And again, we can kind of play around with this using the Chrome inspector, maybe a little less white space. Uh, let's modify that rule. Maybe we do a 0 0.3 REM. Yeah, I like that. Let's do a 0 0.3 REM. And I actually only want that on the bottom. I don't want it at the top. So I'm going to actually uh, specify that I want zero padding on the top, zero padding on the right, and 0 0.3 REM on the bottom. In shorthand, I don't have to specify my left uh, margin because the right margin here is zero. That will apply to my left margin using this shorthand notation. So you can uh, have margin and padding arguments that uh, take one and it's gonna apply in all four directions. Uh, it can take two arguments, the first for up and down uh, and the second for left and right. And then here you see uh, the three arguments and it's gonna apply uh, the first argument to the top, the second argument to the right, and the third argument to the bottom, 
and then it's going to actually take the second argument and apply it to the left. So there's really all kinds of uh, different ways you can use these margin and padding uh, sort of direction syntaxes. Um, and I wanted to expose you to a couple of different variants there. Okay, awesome. So now what we need is we essentially need to duplicate that styling all the way down to the rest of our skills. But also I wanna add a little white space between our list items. So I'm going to actually set a margin bottom on my UL, uh, my list items. And we'll set this to 3.3 REMs. We see how that has uh, appropriately spaced those out. And it looks like they're using a little bit more margin to kind of separate them. Let's go ahead and just experiment with that. Maybe use five REMs, see how that looks. Okay, that's looking better. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna take this paradigm and apply it to the rest of our skills. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and call these things and just copy them into each list item. And I can mess with uh, some of the uh, widths here. So maybe I'm only at 30% proficiency of CSS. Maybe I'm at 20% uh, JavaScript. And I'm getting really good with Ruby, so I'll make that 70%. So we gotta update both the width and the actual text here. And we also need to wrap each of the skills with a paragraph tag. And again, what we're striving for here is semantic markup that's consistent across all of the related elements. So we're basically repeating a pattern for each skill that we have. And you can see how that plays out. And we could alternate some of these colors. So we could say programming skill and essentially assign another class called alt to change these colors around a bit. Uh, let's set them for CSS. And for Ruby. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, for everything that is, has the class skill level and alt, we're going to set the background color to, do we have a dark blue? Yeah, we'll use this aqua color. Hopefully that is dark enough. Uh, well, let's just set the alt here. Oops. I wanna set that actually on the skill level not the div that contains the progress bar. So I'm gonna move that alt down here. And that looks pretty good. And you can of course incorporate other background colors, but uh, we've got a wonderful sort of display of our programming skills that sort of matches this aesthetic. So join me next time. We're not gonna cover the graphic skills. We are gonna cover the language skills and we're gonna move on to the employment section. Uh, and we're gonna bring along uh, a lot of the paradigms and best practices that we use and coach our students in the online and on campus program to do uh, as from a resume perspective, from a career services standpoint. So I hope you'll join us in the next episode uh, as we continue to go through this real world example of using semantic markup and CSS to build a wonderful responsive resume. We'll see you next time.